Time.com. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Time.com. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. We're at the Time Studios in Midtown Manhattan, and right about now, the International Space Station is 230 miles overhead, passing by at 17,500 miles per hour. In a moment, we'll be chatting live with three of the station's six crew members, Commander Steve Swanson and Flight Engineer Reed Wiseman of NASA, as well as Flight Engineer Alexander Gerst of the European Space Agency. Well, thank you for being with us today, and I wanted to just jump right in and ask you, uh, what time did you guys punch in for work this morning, and what does the day ahead look like? We started about 7.30 this morning, and the rest of the day is uh, various things. You have science. Science. I have some repairs to do. What do you got today, Alex? Yeah, I had several little science experiments already today. And uh, I think uh, for the rest of the day, we have um, a training event for the new cargo vehicle that we expect, Orbital, uh, that's uh, coming in the next two weeks. So we're going to actually use the station manipulator to do some practice grapple uh, with it. And then in the evening, I think I have uh, a little bit more science experience. So it's uh, quite a various, well, varied day. It's, it's pretty nice. So it's about a 12-hour day? Yeah, when you include the working out we have to do, it's about a 12-hour day. And, Reed, this one's for you. You've been a big presence on Twitter and social media, something the astronauts of the Apollo era never had to think about. So how do you, how do you see the astronauts' job changing over the decades? Well, I think the astronauts have always wanted to share their journey with as many people as possible. And I think Apollo, with the tools they had, they did a phenomenal job. Uh, we're just lucky to live in this day where, you know, I take a photograph with a, uh, with a camera and uh, we just come back and we can email it straight into our Twitter feeds. And it just does a, it makes it so much easier to share this experience. And so it's almost just become a, a little collateral duty of ours. So you don't even think about it through the day. It's so easy, uh, but it's appreciated and we really enjoy doing it. And you're keeping in touch with the world that way, but how do you keep in touch with your families? You're gone for a long time. Yeah, we're gone for about five and a half to six months, and uh, NASA does a great job of helping us keep in touch with our family. So once a week, we actually get to do a, a fairly short video conference. So I've been talking to my wife and kids. I even had one with my mom and dad. So that's really been fantastic. And uh, that kind of support is really special for us up here and uh, really, really increases the morale on the weekends. And are you able to email back and forth, or is that just not available? No, uh, we have the chance of emailing pretty much the whole day. Uh, uh, once in a while, if we have two minutes between two experiments, we can go to our uh, uh, computer stations and, and just send an email and receive. So uh, I, actually, I feel more in touch with my family uh, right now than I did during most of the training because uh, my family lives in Europe and the, the time difference from Houston is actually uh, quite uncomfortable to have a, a telephone conversation because it's either deep uh, early in the morning for one party. So up here, uh, for me, it's easier, uh, and that's remarkable, I think. This one's for Alex. Congratulations on yesterday's uh, World Cup score. And how well have you been able to follow Germany's deep run to the final round? We, we were actually pretty lucky that uh, most of the games happened during the evening hours that we had here. So uh, after our work was done, we got uh, some live feed actually from Mission Control in Houston. So that's never guaranteed and it only works when we have some bandwidth left. But we were pretty lucky. So most of the games of the U.S. and Germany we, we saw live and that, that was of course a, a good treat for us. And there were a lot of wows yesterday, uh, as you imagine. <laughs> I would imagine. Down on Earth, too. Uh, speaking of the World Cup, Steve, it was mostly fun in games when Germany beat the U.S. in the first round. But the recent U.S.-Russian friction over Ukraine is a far more serious matter. And the other three members of your crew are Russian cosmonauts. Does that kind of thing ever present a problem in the close quarters of a space station? No, it does not. We've become good friends with our Russian colleagues. We've trained with them for a long time, been up here with them for a long time, and uh, that kind of issues don't arise for us, doesn't cause any kind of friction. And I imagine the fact that you look out the window and you see uh, no borders visible from space makes it, it gives you a whole different perspective on things. Yes, it does. And as Alex pointed out, we also watch the, Russia, uh, the uh, soccer games together, so that uh, kind of bonds us together, yeah. too.
Absolutely. We've got a, a handful of questions from uh, some of our readers. This one comes from a young reader named Luke who wants to know, what do you miss most from Earth? Again, you're up there for a long time. Oh, it's the simple things I think that you miss most. And for me personally, I miss a shower, a nice warm shower in the morning. If we could get that going up here, <laughs> wow, that would be something really, really super. But for now, uh, that's the number one thing. I did see I did see on a TV show a couple days ago, a family sat down and had a big pizza with a soda. And man, <laughs> I was at that point, I was missing pizza a little bit more than the uh, than the shower. But overall, that's where we are. We actually did get three pizza questions from readers, so they were right on the money there. Um, from some of our, our photography fans who read Time, what cameras do you use? And are there limitations on what cameras can be used in space? Can you just use an iPhone to take a picture up there? Well, you could take an iPhone, but uh, of course, uh, what we see out the window is so beautiful that we need something with a little bit more resolution. So we have uh, like professional uh, SLR cameras, all sorts of lenses. Sometimes, like if you want to take a picture of a typhoon or a hurricane, you need a wide-angle lens. So, uh, and then uh, if you want to take a picture of your hometown, you have this uh, huge 800 millimeter lens that you can actually see houses, individual houses, and in. it's pretty amazing what you can do. And also, it's amazing to see what the cosmic radiation does. Like uh, we. Really have to use up these cameras like they only last for half a year or a year and then the the pixel damage through cosmic radiation is so big that we actually bring up new ones and i imagine the view of the nighttime sky or it's always a nighttime sky of course is radically different with no atmospheric interference that is true the stars do not twinkle up here they just are pinpoints when there's so many of them it's so beautiful where do you go for privacy? The station has as much uh, habitable space as I think a 747, and yet that's all the space you've got. Do you ever find that you need a place to retreat and get a little time alone? You know, working with these guys, I'd almost say no. It's uh, it's always a good it's always good fun. But we each actually do have we each actually have our own little bedroom. It's about the size of a telephone booth, uh, so it can fit about you. And uh, we have two laptops in there to connect with the outside world. But uh, really, it's pretty comfortable, and we treat those with the with the highest level of respect. So my bedroom is my room, and uh, and that's my little place to go if I need some privacy. But to date, I mean, it's really just been a sleeping quarters. Uh, most of the time, we're out here socializing, inviting our Russian crew members down or heading down to see them uh, in the evenings. And uh, really, it's it's a good community living situation. And speaking of sleeping, do you dream differently in space? Is there something about the experience, unconsciously knowing where you are, that changes the way you experience dreams? Actually, I've been asked that question a lot, and I, I, in the first weeks, I never remembered my dreams. But I did have one dream that I remembered last week, and that was actually with with, with Reed launching on a on a rocket from Canada to fly to Baikonur, from where we mounted that rocket onto a Soyuz and then flew to space. So I thought that was a pretty remarkable dream. <laughs> and one thing, another thing that I notice at night is actually that I sometimes I wake up at night and I don't know where up and down is. Of course, there is no up and down, and I believe that in that moment. I think I'm head down or somewhere, somewhere turned around, but then I switch on the light and I realize I'm actually completely normal. So uh, that happened to me quite a few times, and I actually did hear that happens to, to other people once in a while as well. And I'm sure there are lots of good days in space. What's the toughest day you've had up there, a day you were just happy to see come to an end and go to bed and forget about? There was a day where Alex took some hair clippers <laughs> and he stood a little too close to me and our commander, uh, Dr. Steve Swanson. And I got to say, I was happy when that day came to an end. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got a few months for your hair to grow back, so that's good. Um, and I guess this will be our final question. Um, I know you don't get a lot of free time, but when you do have it, how much of that do you spend simply enjoying the view of the Earth outside your window? Almost all of it. That's one of our biggest free time events that we do up here. And then, of course, we you always want to take a picture and share it. So then we spend the other part trying to uh, take uh, process the pictures and get them down to everybody else. So that's pretty much what we do with our free time. Well, thank you so much for making the time, gentlemen. Safe travels and come home to us soon.